Greetings in the name of Jesus, dear people of God. This week in our video service, we're doing something slightly different. In the past, released on Sundays, we did a service that was modeled largely after a Sunday morning service. From this point forward, we will be releasing a video in the middle of each week that is separate and independent. The meditation will be based on the epistle from the prior Sunday. And the service itself is not based on a Sunday communion service, but on the daily prayer of the church. Christians throughout the ages have gathered for prayer every morning and every evening, praying in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs as they reflect on the word of God which is what we will do this day. So we join together now in this time of word and prayer with the opening verse. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning is now and will be forever. Amen. We join together in praying Psalm 84. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord God of hosts! My soul is longing and yearning, is yearning for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my soul ring out their joy to God, the living God. The sparrow herself finds a home, and the swallow a nest for her brood. She lays her young by the altars, Lord of hosts, my King and my God. They are happy who dwell in your house forever singing your praise. They are happy whose strength is in you, in whose hearts are the roads to Zion. As they go through the bitter valley, they make it a place of springs. The autumn rain covers it with blessings. They walk with ever-growing strength. They will see the God of God in Zion.
Let us pray. Almighty God, you heard the prayer of Christ, your chosen one, and raised him to the lasting joy of your presence. Help us in our pilgrimage toward you to love your church and to offer the sacrifice of praise at your altar that we may hasten to your home and joyfully look upon your glorious splendor, which we have seen in your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from 2 Timothy. As for me, I am already being poured out as a libation, and the time of my departure has come. I fought the good fight, I finished the race, I have kept the faith. From now on, there is reserved for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. At my first defense, no one came to my support, but all deserted me. May it not be counted against them. But the Lord stood by me and gave me strength so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed and all the Gentiles might hear it. So I was rescued from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil attack and save me for his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. Here ends the reading. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It's been a lot of years that I've been a pastor now, and things that surprised me and caught me off guard when I was younger I now recognize the pattern. One of those patterns is in visiting some of our oldest members, those who have spent many long years of faithful service to God and to community in loving their family, their friends, their church, but most of all, their God. And after many years, as the body begins to weaken, and one after another, after another physical ailment afflicts them, the question often comes up, Pastor, I have already buried so many of my friends and even my family members. The people that I knew and grew up with and worked alongside of in my adult life have already gone to their heavenly reward. Now that I'm sitting here stuck in a bed at a nursing home with limited mobility and not much opportunity to do what I used to do, the things that I used to value, why on earth does God still have me here? What purpose is my being here? I know my Lord. I trust in him for salvation, for the glory of the life to come. Pastor, why? Why does he still have me here? Well, one can never, of course, parse out the hidden counsels of God. There's no easy, pat answer to that. But what I'm always struck by is if someone dares to voice that sentiment and that feeling, that desire to go home and be with the Lord in the presence of a loving and caring adult child or even an adult grandchild, often the response is, Mom, don't talk that way. Grandpa, 
don't say that. You've got a lot of years left to go. As if to dismiss the observation. I've often wondered when St. Timothy heard these words from Paul, his mentor in the faith and in the ministry, if he heard the words of today's reading, if he wanted to jump through the paper to talk to Paul so far off and say, Paul, don't talk that way. You've had a fruitful ministry and God has a lot in store for you. But listen carefully to what St. Paul said to Timothy. As for me, I'm already being poured out like a libation, a drink offering. And the time for my departure, my exodus, has come. I fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. That is an expression of faith. Paul knew that his years of ministry were drawing to a close. He had spent so many years traveling across the known world to share the good news of salvation, of new life, of grace in Jesus Christ. He had endured shipwrecks, abuse, imprisonment, ridicule, and now he was approaching the end of his days. And he was being, as he put it, poured out as a libation, which doesn't mean a lot to us in the modern world, but back then meant a sacrifice, an offering, one that would be poured out perhaps of wine or of precious oil as a sign of thanksgiving and sacrifice to God. Often, a libation poured out in memory of those who have gone before, loved ones who, before our generation, have fought the good fight and kept the faith. Whether his friends, his co-workers, his younger companions wanted to hear the word, Paul knew in his heart that the time of his departure had come. And the word there is important. He didn't just say, yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm going to die any day now, though he might have said that. But he framed it in words that were deep with scriptural resonance and meaning. He knew that the time of his exodus, that's the real word behind departure, the time for his exodus had come. And that word takes us back to the days of Moses, to the sufferings that the people of God endured when they were in bondage in Egypt, when they worked as slaves for a foreign taskmaster and could only hope for a departure, for freedom, because all they knew in that land, in that age, was bondage and servitude. Paul knew a bondage and a servitude to the brokenness of this world as he experienced the pains and the limitations of life in this world. He knew the brokenness and the pains of the inevitable conflicts between those who disagreed with his ministry to the Gentiles, those devout Jews who were convinced he was distorting the faith of their fathers by sharing it with the Gentiles. And yet, he labored on in faithfulness because he knew that the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, 
The God who generations before would split the Red Sea and lead his people out of slavery and into the freedom of a land of promise would come to set him free. He knew that death was not some endless cycle of life the way we like to talk about it now in our modern day and age as if it were simply a passing stage to the next time and the next time and the next time around from birth to death, from birth to death, from birth to death. No, he knew that this was more akin to the exodus of the people of Israel. It was a journey that would require incredible faith as they were challenged to walk through the sea, trusting God to clear a path through the waters and lead them safe on the other side. It was an exodus that required them to know that God would, in fact, give us this day our daily bread, even though they were in the middle of nowhere with nothing to eat in sight, trusting that God would rain manna, from above, quail would land in the camp, water would pour forth the rock, and God would provide. And though the end was not in sight, though they would journey for a lifetime, they would come to the River Jordan. And there, looking across those waters, once again God's people would experience his deliverance. The waters of the Jordan parting, priests leading the way with the Ark of the Covenant, the sign of God's mercy, leading the way as they entered through those waters to the land of promise. By the time of the writing to his young companion Timothy, Paul had spent many, many years journeying through the wilderness that is life in this world. He know its joys and celebrations. He know its heartbreaks and its sorrows. And after a lifetime of traveling, he was ready to lay that burden down, to cross the Jordan, to experience a new exodus, to be freed from this body of death, to be freed from the bondage to sin and captivity and suffering, to enter into a land of promise, a land flowing with milk and honey, a land whose rivers surround a tree, whose leaves are for the healing of the nations, whose fruit for 12 months brings life and salvation to all. He was ready to lay down the burdens of this life and to make his exodus into a land of promise. There were no regrets here, no sorrows over paths not taken or roads not trod. He knew he had fought the good fight and finished the race. And he knew that because he had kept the faith. And it is precisely that that I seek to point people to as they lay in a hospital bed or a nursing home room, yearning for their own exodus, that there is a faith that we cling to, the faith of our fathers that sustained them and sustains us in every generation. It is a faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the righteous judge and the judge whose righteousness means he declares us righteous, not guilty. A sentence that will be given us on that day and not only to us, but all to have longed for his appearing. People of God, 
wherever we are on our journey towards our heavenly home, whether our feet are ready to step into the waters of the Jordan or if we are still dripping wet from the Red Sea and have a long journey to go, Paul's spirit marks ours. We may experience suffering and be poured out like a libation. We may or may not feel like our exodus is close at hand. But we fight a good fight, the fight of faith. It's the fight we sang about in today's hymn. Fight the good fight with all your might. Christ is your strength. Christ, your right. Lay hold of life, and it shall be your joy, your crown, eternally. That is the journey we take. And so, we look forward to the day of Jesus appearing. We know that we look forward to his coming in righteousness. That's why we gather together in person on Sundays, virtually in the middle of the week, to know the presence of the Lord, who is the one who comes to us in his appearing, in word and prayer, in the sacraments that we share when we gather together as the people of God. Christ is there to encourage us, to strengthen us. It is the fight of faith to wrestle the battles against sin, death, and Satan's power and control in our life, knowing that the victory is ours because Jesus Christ is the mighty conqueror who splits the sea and leads us out of slavery to sin, who accompanies us in word and sacrament as we live our life of word and prayer, journeying towards the promised land that is the kingdom of heaven. We fight the good fight. We may or may not be ready to finish the race, but this is our goal. Like the saints of old, like Paul who went before us, we seek to keep the faith, knowing this, that there is reserved for us a crown of righteousness that the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to you, will give to all his faithful who have made this exodus with him in the last day. May we continue to long for his appearing as Paul put it, yearning for God to come at the end of time with the appearance of his Son to lead us across the Jordan to the promised land and in the meantime, yearning and longing for his presence where he gathers with his people in word and sacrament. As we await that promised land, as we journey towards it in this world, like St. Paul, we long for his appearing. With the psalmist we pray, my soul is longing and yearning, yearning for the courts of the Lord. Our soul rings out with joy to God, the living God. Yeah, there are birds that build their nests in our rafters, they lay their young in this property. But we, like them, are truly happy. For we dwell in the house of the Lord, forever singing his praise. May we who sing his praise in psalms and hymns as we do in this service and the spiritual songs that guide our life, be encouraged by our song, 
until we journey with St. Paul and with Timothy and with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven towards that heavenly kingdom that is ours. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. We are encouraged on this journey by God's word and prayer. We pray in psalmody and we pray in petition. So let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, for all people according to their needs. Merciful God, we humbly implore you to cast the bright beams of your light upon your church, that we, being instructed by the doctrine of the blessed apostles, may walk in the light of your truth and finally attain to the light of everlasting life through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed Lord and holy and most merciful God, You've taught us the way of your commandments. We implore you to pour out your grace into our hearts, cause it to bear fruit in us, that being ever mindful of your mercies and your laws, we may always be directed to your will and daily increase in love toward you and one another. Enable us to resist all evil, and to live a godly life. Help us to follow the example of our Lord and Savior, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, send your Holy Spirit into our hearts that he may rule and direct us according to your will and comfort us in all our temptations and afflictions. Defend us from all error. Lead us into all truth, that we, being steadfast in faith, may increase in all good works, and in the end, obtain everlasting life. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Blessed Lord, you've caused all Holy Scripture to be written for our learning. Grant that we may so hear, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that by the patience and comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless us, protect us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.